<laughs> all right, everybody. Thank you all for coming out tonight to our first Agile Marketing Meetup of 2015. Woo! We have um, some exciting, exciting stuff for you tonight. Um, we have um, we have a very special speaker tonight, Yasha Kakis Wolf, the CMO of BitTorrent. Um, some of you, I, is anyone in here at our very first event in October 2012? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, no, a few, three or four. So Yasha was our speaker at our very first event. Um, we had 25 people come, and um, it was a World Series night. And they were, it was very hardcore people who came that night who were really interested in agile marketing. And yeah, Yasha gave an amazing sort of overview of agile marketing. But it's been a long time. We've, we've covered a lot of different topics. So we thought it would be a great opportunity to have him come in and sort of uh, re-educate a lot of us over agile principles and uh, how it all fits into marketing. And um, prior to that, we're also trying a, a new feature tonight. We're going to have a lightning talk by um, our illustrious co-organizer, Paul Willard, uh, on hypothesis testing. And we, um, he's actually developed a, um, a model that we're going to share out with the group. It's something you can take back home to your company and use with you. But before we get started, a couple of housekeeping announcements. Um, we first want to thank our awesome sponsors uh, for uh, food tonight. Uh, it's Acel Partners and uh, Artist Ventures. To, um, it's Attraction Capital is also one of our great sponsors. And then obviously Zendesk who's so kind to host us here, and Sam from Zendesk who come uh, say a couple words. Hi guys, um, thanks for coming. I'm Sam at Zendesk. Um, I know Yasha from way back, actually. Um, I'm on the product marketing team here, and um, a couple other folks from Zendesk are in the back, and somebody said, oh crap, binomial distribution? You're not gonna talk about that, are you, Sam? I'm like, no, I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, so good luck with that one. Um, um, I'm sure, we'll, you know. Uh, we'll be super excited about it. Uh, house rules, thanks for coming. Really appreciate it. Don't touch the moss wall. Um, our CEO will get pissed off. Um, that's a joke. Um, no, seriously, it's great to have you guys. Um, um, this is our second time hosting this event. We hope to keep doing it in the future. Um, that's why we have this space. We are big believers that we want to be in the community in every way that that matters. Uh, not just hosting marketing events for our customers and partners, but also being a part of the marketing community, being a part of develop the developer community that's out there. And we're super active in the local community that we're a part of, the Tenderloin. So um, that's why we have this amazing space. And it does kind of feel like mom and dad are out of town and we're having a party in the basement, which is awesome. But don't break anything. And if you break anything, just clean it up. So thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. The final thing is that... Um, uh, we are hiring, and we are hiring in marketing. So zendesk.com slash careers. Um, many of the places that we are hiring is in San Francisco, but we also have offices around the world. So if you're looking for a job, um, uh, check us out. So thanks a lot for coming. Appreciate it. If, hey, Sam, if, if, if should they come talk to you? If, they're, if, if, people, if you're interested in a role and you're here tonight, should they come talk to you? Or are there other... Thanks. Paul, if you want to. Lightning talk. First ever. First ever lightning talk. So my instructions were to give you something that you could all leave here later tonight and try. And so I thought that you should derive the hypothesis testing equation. <laughs> Not, not really. But so the hypothesis testing equation is a little bit daunting, right? There's two forms of it, one for binomial, binomial distribution, big fancy word. All it really means is, did they do it or not? There's only two choices, right? They did it or they didn't. They clicked or they didn't. They converted and purchased or they didn't. That's a binomial distribution. The other form of it is for continuous distribution. I think of that as shopping cart. How much did they buy? Instead of a yes, no decision, we now have a number. And we'll have a range of numbers for the results. So if you're running test A versus B, both will have a range of purchase amounts. And you need a means to compare these things. So the hypothesis testing equation was built because when you run a, a test, you, you run something. You run your user experience, typically, against a small piece of the market. And what you want to know is, if I ran it against the whole market, 
how would it convert? But you're running against a tiny, tiny sample. And typically when you're A-B testing, you're running against two tiny, tiny samples, and you're trying to extrapolate those results to the entire market. And th there's going to be noise in the data. There's going to be granularity in the data. And the hypothesis testing equation was developed for normal distributions, I'm told, by statisticians. I'm not a statistician. If you are and you want to rip on me, please do it after I'm off the stage. <laughs> um, but so the, the hypothesis testing equation was built so that when you run an A-B test, you can compare the two results and you can say, is this noise or is one actually better than the other? Um, nobody uses this for a long time. I got a lot. I have a blog post on this at subtractioncapital.com slash blog, where I've got a link to this spreadsheet. This equation is here on a simple spreadsheet, and that's what I'm actually going to demonstrate using for you. So we've got a test. My test has, it's an A-B test. Sample A is the red button for conversion. Keeping it simple, right? My B is a blue button for conversion. A is, my red button is my champion. That's what I normally run, so I ran it against 80% of my traffic, my sample size. I sent 20,472 visitors of my site to the red button uh, conversion page. I sent 4,653 to the blue button conversion page, right? Here's how many clicked the red button, 1,542. Here's how many clicked the blue button, 315. They're different sample sizes, so we care about conversion, right? My champion has a 7.5% conversion. Sorry, this isn't where I wanted it. My challenger, the blue button, had a 7.16% conversion. Quite a bit lower, actually, 5% lower. And for me, I look at, wow, that's 333 conversions. That feels like a lot to me. That feels like a pretty solid result. I'm like, it feels worse. It just feels worse, right, when I'm looking at these numbers. So when you run through the hypothesis testing equation, it does that big thing that was on the other page, calculates the C, looks it up over here, and finds a confidence interval. Now, the confidence interval says, if you ran this test 100 times, how many times would you have the same winner? Right? So 50% confidence is like a coin toss, right? 50% of the time, heads is going to come up. You don't have a winner. They're the same. They're identical numbers, regardless of what the number is. Um, I color code these things, red, yellow, green based on my thresholds and where I like to use them. And I conditionally format my result to match those color codes, right? So up through 70% confidence, that means 30% of the time the blue button might be better. And I might be making a decision and going with something that's actually, I'm picking the wrong horse. And so I don't want to make decisions on 70% confidence things. Uh, yellow, by the time you get to 85 or 90% ballpark, I'm starting to feel a little bit better about it. I really like to see 95% or better. And so for the numbers I just ran through there, we had about a 70% 70 confidence that the red button is actually better than the blue button. They might be the same. The blue button might be better. 30% of the time, the blue button is going to be better. That's a lot, actually. Um, so I was trying to work on if I had 315 conversions, if I had 18 fewer conversions, <laughs> On the blue button, I would have had 95% confidence that, that that really was the winner. Now, it doesn't say it's really 5% better or 10% better. It just says it's better. So, so there's a subtlety that's in there. But it says it really is better. Um, and so when we ran banners, when we ran uh, A-B tests, uh, we, we used to run A-B tests and then segment the analysis and run different segments through the hypothesis testing equation to see if one segment was better than another. And I talk about a lot of detail like that in my blog post. And I also go through a lot of detail about continuous distribution in the blog post. And I don't want to take too long here, so I'll just point you at the blog post, and it's just subtractioncapital.com slash blog, and you'll, you'll find it in there, no problem. Uh, this, there's a link to this spreadsheet in there. It's publicly available. You can copy it. You can do with it what you will. Good luck. Um, and uh, I hope that it's of benefit to you and of use to you. That's it. My lightning talk. <laughs>